This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights, closed captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. Today, we have Andrea Clasura, staff attorney here at DRNY. She's going to discuss committees on special education, otherwise known as CSEs, and their responsibility regarding special transportation for students with disabilities. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Katrin. Thank you. It's great to be joining you on the podcast. Can you start by explaining what special transportation services are provided for students with disabilities under federal and New York state laws? Both federal and New York state laws are in place that aim to ensure that students with disabilities receive a free and appropriate public education. And that includes special education, as well as related services, such as special transportation that are designed to meet the unique needs of students with disabilities. So special transportation can take many different forms. The important thing is that it is designed to meet the needs of the particular student. So for example, Some students may have mobility-related needs, perhaps they use a wheelchair, and the vehicle needs to be able to accommodate that. Other students may have communication or behavioral needs. In those situations, the special transportation could include accommodations such as an aid on a bus, an interpreter, or special seating, like seating in the front of a bus. These special services are to be provided to students who need them at no cost to the parent. In deciding what special transportation is required, any needs of the student relating to his or her disability should be considered. Those include mobility, behavior, communication, physical needs, and health needs. And that's not an exhaustive list and it's up to a committee on special education to thoughtfully consider the needs of the student and to include specific recommendations to address their needs. So Andrea, you just mentioned uh, the Committee on Special Education. Can you tell us what is that and what are the responsibilities? In New York, a Committee on Special Education commonly referred to as a CSE, is a local committee that is responsible for creating an individualized education program for students who are eligible for special education services. The CSE includes parents, teachers, a school psychologist, and a district representative, and it can include other individuals as well. The IEP, that individualized plan, should describe the student's needs, their goals, and the special education supports and services uh, that the student will receive. When it comes to special transportation, the CSE should not simply recommend special transportation in the IEP. Instead, the IEP should set out specifically what is needed, whether that be special seating, uh, certain equipment or devices, a service animal, an attendant, or some other accommodation. Just so we can clarify, if we have one request, is that something that can be changed at any point? Is there an, uh, a situation where um, we could start out with one request and it could really change into something else? Is it an organic process? Yes. So if some new need arises, if some new device or other accommodation becomes necessary, the parent can certainly request a meeting with the CSE to have that added to the IEP. Great. That's great information. Could you provide an example on how rules regarding special transportation should be applied? Ideally, the CSE will come together for a meeting to consider all the needs of the student that they have related to their disability, and it will agree on special transportation to address each of those needs as appropriate. But of course, there are sometimes disagreements between parents and school officials regarding what services should be provided, and that happened in a recent case that DRNY assisted with. A parent requested door-to-door transportation for her son, a student with autism, who, because of a new bus route, was having to walk along a busy road with no sidewalk to get to and from his bus stop. The parent presented evidence to the CSE that this was unsafe for her son, who had a high degree of distractibility. And how did the school district respond to the parent's request? 
the school district denied the parents' request for door-to-door -door transportation. It said that because the student did not have a mobility issue, pick up and drop off at the student's home wasn't required. Instead, even though the CSC recognized that the student needed supervision getting to and from the bus stop, the district said that it was up to the parent to ensure that the student got safely to and from his bus stop. There are processes in place so that parents can challenge decisions that they disagree with. Here, the parent filed a due process complaint to challenge this decision, and an impartial hearing officer agreed with the parent that the school district was required to provide door-to-door -door transportation. However, the case wasn't over at that point because the school district decided to appeal, and that is when the parent contacted DRNY to assist. So DRNY opposed the school district's appeal to the state review officer. And what was the state review officer's or SRO's decision, and how was this issue eventually resolved? The state review officer agreed with the impartial hearing officer that the school district was required to provide door-to-door -door transportation in this case. The SRO explains that whether the school district should pick up and drop off the student from home or the bus stop is an individualized decision. The CSE should consider the student's needs, as mentioned before, not just physical needs, but also behavioral and communication needs. Um, the CSE can also consider factors like the student's age, the distance, and the nature of the area the student has to walk through. Here, the SRO found that the CSE put too much emphasis on the student's physical needs and did not give enough consideration to the student's behaviors and other relevant factors. And so what strategies could the CSE explore to properly meet future student transportation needs? As we've talked about, special transportation should be designed to meet the unique needs of the student. If a student requires supervision because of their disability, a school district could provide an aid or a bus stop monitor to help meet the student's needs if it's appropriate in a given case. Travel training can also be beneficial for students with transportation-related needs to help them stay safe, meet their goals, and learn to travel more independently. So there are a number of strategies that can be used, and it's certainly not one size fits all. And what advice do you have for others who may be facing similar issues for special transportation for students with disabilities? Don't be afraid to challenge decisions that you disagree with. If you feel there are services that your child needs that are not included in their IEP, there are actions you can take to challenge that. You can request a meeting, you can go to mediation, or if need be, you can file a complaint. There are also local advocates who can help you through that process. You have a right to participate in decision-making about your child's education and services, so take advantage of that as much as you can. Andrea, thank you so much for your time today. It's been wonderful speaking with you. Thank you. Empire State of Rights Closed Captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next Wednesday, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed caption version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel. To listen to more Empire State of Rights closed captioned, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.